development is the process by which a single cell zygote develops into a fully patterned adult individual. For example, the fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster lays an egg that is quite featureless and that contains only one um, uh, cell. And over a period of 24 hours, this egg develops into a, um, a larva. And over the next few days, the larva develops into uh, an adult that has all the necessary organs in all the right places um, uh, of the adult animal. And the process by which a single cell, the single cell zygote undergoes mitosis and then the cells uh, uh, pattern themselves or form themselves into uh, uh, an individual that has organs and appendages and so on is called development. In this uh, video, we see the first, the Drosophila embryo during the first three hours of development. And we can see that the, these bright glowing dots, which are the nuclei, are undergoing synchronous cell divisions and increasing in their number. In the next stage, the embryo undergoes a set of tissue movements called castrulation that form both the, the three main types of tissue uh, in the organism, um, endoderm, which is gut, with the digestive system, ectoderm, which is skin and neural tissue, and mesoderm, which is um, uh, 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 organs, uh, uh, everything that is not um, the endoderm or the ectoderm. And at this stage, what we are looking at is the organization of the embryo into repeating units called segments. And these segments correspond to the segments of the larvae and the adult animal and therefore the body plan or where in the animal um, each type of cell goes is laid out during these early embryonic um, stages. Now the embryo will continue to develop and um, we will see further uh, tissue movement and specialization of the cells into um, different organs. Um, on the bottom, we can see the formation of the nerve cord, which is part of the nervous system of the animal. And soon, we will start to see the um, larvae undergoing muscle contractions, um, which is a, a, a signifier of the formation of a muscle tissue. In fact, uh, at the end of 24 hours, the you have a fully functional larvae that is capable of surviving in the wild on its own, feeding itself, moving around, and so on, uh, that is ready to hatch um, from the egg. What is amazing about this process of development is that the egg will go from a single cell to billions of cells organized into um, organs and, and tissues in a matter of 24 hours, completely autonomously, therefore, and requiring no input from the outside. And uh, so development is evidently a very important problem from um, a scientific viewpoint. But it is also a very important problem from a medical viewpoint, since a lot of uh, diseases, especially um, genetic defects, um, arise from errors uh, during development. For the longest time, not much progress was made in understanding how this coordination between cells um, in order to form these complex patterns 
was uh, achieved. Um, some of the earliest insights were through transplantation um, experiments. For example, Hans Spiemann took a region of the newt embryo called the dorsal blastopore lip and transplanted it into a different embryo. This led to the development of an, uh, uh, two newts attached to each other um, uh, 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 that, that were reflections of each other. Similarly, if you take um, a region of the chick limb bud, um, so uh, the part of the embryo that's going to develop into the pinky and then transplant that tissue into the part of the limb bud that's going to become a thumb, you get a mirror image, uh, um, uh, extra digits that ha are mirror images of the normal digits. And these experiments suggested that parts of the embryo, such as the uh, dorsal blastopore lip, now known as the Spiemann organizer, had the ability to organize um, the rest of the cells in an embryo into um, into uh, adult body plans or parts of adult body plans. And therefore, these uh, uh, parts of tissues uh, came to be known as organizer. And one clear implication um, uh, from these organizers was that they must be secreting uh, chemicals that um, can signal to other cells to organize themselves into patterns um, to form other embryos or uh, other digits as the case may be and these chemicals came to be known as morphogens however um, there was not much progress um, in understanding this this process of development until scientists started taking a genetic approach to development which means when scientists started to discover which genes controlled this process of development and what kind of uh, proteins those genes genes coded for and how those proteins worked it is when this genetic approach to development was adopted um, uh, is when we got a uh, deeper understanding of development. Before we go deeper into um, the genetics of development, um, let us um, discuss um, some aspects of the uh, uh, fruit fly, the Drosophila melanogaster body plan, as well as its life cycle. The belly of uh, the animal as well as of the embryo is called ventral whereas the back is called dorsal the head of both the animal the adult animal and the embryo is called anterior and the tail is called posterior so um, we have basically two axes two ways of uh, cells to know where in the embryo they are there's the anterior to posterior axis or the antero-posterior axis. And the other axis is the dorsal to ventral axis or the dorsoventral axis. Also, as we have discussed before, the body of the fruit fly is divided into repeating units called segments. There's eight abdominal segments three thoracic segments and three segments in the head and each segment is specialized um, to have uh, particular organs or particular appendages attached to it for example the first thoracic segment has the first pair of legs um, that that, that um, um, grow out of it whereas the second thoracic segment has the second pair of legs and the wings that grew out of it and the third thoracic segment has the third pair of legs as well as a specialized flight organ called the halter that is um, attached to it. Um, the Drosophila life cycle starts 
with an uh, a fertilized egg that is laid by the the female drosophila and this egg undergoes embryogenesis for a period of about uh, 24 hours um, after which the egg hatches resulting in a first instar larva the first instar larva molts into the second instar larva which then molts into the third instar larva and the third instar larva undergoes pupation for about four days until it closes in the form of an adult um, fruit fly. Um, one of the big challenges of doing genetics in, in development is that these genes act so early and are of such uh, uh, importance to the survival of the animal that individuals who are mutant for these genes often die um, during embryogenesis itself making it very hard to see the phenotypes uh, that these mutants have or you know uh, to, to determine what part of the developmental process a particular gene controls the drosophila uh, embryogenesis helps us overcome this problem because even though um, uh, mutants for developmental genes will die in during embryogenesis um, we would still be able to see the body plan of the larva and um, this larva has an exoskeleton made up of uh, ketin and um, in this exoskeleton are these hair like structures organized in these uh, very stereotypical patterns called denticle belts and looking at the number of the denticle belts helps us tell how many segments are there as well as um, looking at the pattern or the shape of the denticle belts tells us what segments there are so even though um, the the developmental uh, genes their mutants are lethal um, at a very early stage it is still possible to identify what phenotype what aspect of the body plan those genes, genes control similarly um, the third instar larva has these disc tissues organized in discs that um, give rise to particular appendages in the adult during uh, pupation and um, one can look at even though the um, larva would die in mutants uh, for uh, developmental genes one can still look at the um, uh, both the the uh, patterns of the imaginal discs as well as what genes are expressed or not expressed in these imaginal discs to determine um, you know what phenotype particular genes what appendage phenotype these particular genes control